The Israeli military claims to have struck 40 Hezbollah targets in southern Lebanon. According to the Israeli military, their strikes focused on the Aita al Shab village, situated approximately three kilometers inside Lebanon. The attacks allegedly targeted Hezbollah's weapon storage facilities and other assets. Israel's defense minister claims that half of the Hezbollah commanders in southern Lebanon have been wiped out. Hezbollah has dismissed this claim. Iran has reportedly announced a new campaign for women called Noor. The campaign aims to intensify a crackdown against hijab rule violations. After the campaign was launched, videos emerged on social media, purportedly showing women who were violating hijab rules being arrested by Iran's morality police. Meanwhile, Iranian courts have sentenced a well-known rapper, Tumaj Salehi, to death. He's been convicted on charges linked to Iran's 2022-23 anti-hijab protests. The protests were triggered by the death of a 22-year-old, Masa Amini, in the morality police's custody. In the U.S., the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mike Johnson, has condemned pro-Palestine protests at college campuses. During a visit to Columbia University, Johnson asked students to go back to class and stop the nonsense. He also demanded the resignation of Columbia University's president for not being able to restore order on campus. Meanwhile, some students at the University of Southern California have been arrested. They were protesting against Israel's actions in Gaza. Similar arrests have been reported at Columbia, Yale and New York University or NYU. U.S. President Joe Biden has signed bills that provide aid to Ukraine, Taiwan and Israel into law. The aid package is worth $95 billion in total. It provides $61 billion in assistance to Ukraine, $26 billion to Israel and about $8 billion to Taiwan. In recent weeks, the U.S. secretly shipped long-range attacker missiles to Ukraine. The missiles are part of a $300 million military aid package for Ukraine that Biden had approved on March 12th. The White House uh, National Security Advi Advisor Jake Sullivan has confirmed that a significant number of attackers have been sent to Kyiv. He also confirmed that the U.S. will send more missiles to Ukraine. Sullivan added that Kyiv has committed to only using the attackers inside their own territory and not in Russia. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has stressed on the need for responsible relations between China and the U.S. The remarks come amid Blinken's three-day visit to China. Blinken also met Shanghai's Communist Party secretary and highlighted the city's significance as an economic hub. Blinken's visit to China suggests that Washington is trying to mend its fraught ties with Beijing. A grand jury has indicted, indicted 18 people on charges of taking part in a fake electoral uh, scheme. The scheme took place in the U.S. state of Arizona in 2020. It was aimed at getting then-U.S. President Donald Trump re-elected. The indictment is uh, redacted to conceal the names of seven defendants, while 11 have been named. The court papers also list a former U.S. president, presumably Trump, as an unindicted co-conspirator. Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez has suspended his official duties. This comes amid an ongoing investigation into corruption allegations against his wife, Begona Gomez. Sánchez has denied the allegations and said he will defend his wife's honor. But he also says that he will stop and reflect on his political future. Unrest continues to grip the Caribbean nation of Haiti. On Wednesday, shots were fired near the country's national palace in the capital, Port-au-Prince. The incident took place a day before the country was to get a transition council. The council should be sworn in today and will be tasked with choosing the country's next prime minister and cabinet. However, powerful gangs have overrun Haiti and they want to be included in the talks on the country's future. 
thousands attended dawn services across New Zealand to mark the National Anzac Day. While in Sydney in Australia, people gathered to watch the annual parade. As April 25th commemorates the fallen soldiers of the Gallipoli landings during World War I. In 1915, thousands of troops from the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps were among a larger Allied force that landed on the narrow beaches of the Gallipoli Peninsula. The ill-fated campaign claimed more than 130,000 lives. In climate news, Taliban officials participated in a three-day climate change conference in Kabul. The talks focused on the impact of climate change in Afghanistan. The organizers said that this was the first time when Taliban officials joined a session like this. The other attendees included UN officials and diplomats. Kenya is reeling under devastating floods. The heavy rains have inundated several parts of the country. The floods have also displaced thousands of families. The Kenyan Meteorological Department has warned that heavy rains are likely to continue for the coming days. This also comes at a time when hospitals in Kenya are grappling with medicine shortages as the cases of malaria are mounting in the country. Parts of South and Southeast Asia are reeling under scorching heat. Heatwave alerts have been issued in several parts of India. Schools across the Philippines have suspended classes. Heat warnings have been issued for Thailand's capital, Bangkok. Uh, Worshippers in Bangladesh are praying for rain to get respite from the heat. Experts attribute these heat waves to climate change. Meanwhile, Israel is also experiencing a hot spell. In some regions, the temperatures touched 40 degrees Celsius. At least 100,000 people reportedly went to national parks to cool themselves down. According to Israel's meteorological service, the temperatures will see a drop by this weekend. A wildfire was burning near the Cuban town of Vinales. 90% of the fire was contained by firefighters, but the remaining part is still burning due to strong winds. The fire burned approximately 350 hectares of land in the region. The wildfire is threatening an area which is Cuba's most important tourist destination. A study by the British Antarctic Survey has revealed that global warming led to the loss of emperor penguin chick colonies in 2023. 14 out of 66 penguin colonies were affected by sea ice loss. This is due to record low sea ice levels. The early melting of sea ice jeopardizes the survival of the penguin chicks. They, risk, they are at risk of drowning or freezing before they develop waterproof feathers. Hundreds of pilot whales were spotted stranded on a beach in Western Australia. At least 26 died before the authorities could help them. Dozens of volunteers were seen watering them in an attempt to save their lives. Whales strand themselves for a variety of reasons like sickness, navigating errors or human activity. In South Africa, the El Nino weather phenomenon is threatening uh, grain shortages and food insecurity. According to the UN, this is because of a severe drought caused by the El Nino effect. Due to the drought, the production of grains has gone down. At least 16 million people have been affected by grain shortages in the region so far. The United Nations is launching a climate resilience fund. This is to help displaced people who are threatened by climate change. The agency aims to raise at least $100 million by the end of 2025. The UN says that climate risks are correlated with conflict and poverty. On to business and tech news. TikTok CEO Xiao Zhi Chu has said that the app is not going away from the US. This was after US President Joe Biden signed a law that could ban TikTok in the country. TikTok could be banned if the app's Chinese owner, ByteDance, does not sell it by January next year. The firm is expected to, ch expected to challenge this new law. 
Tech giant Meta's shares plunged by over 15% yesterday, wiping out about $200 billion from the firm's market value. Meta shares crashed after the, after the company reported its first quarter earnings for this year. The firm's revenue in Q1 was in line with market expectations, but the forecast for the next quarter spooked, invest, uh, spooked investors. Meta says it's expecting to earn slightly less than market forecasts for Q2, while increasing expenses and investments in artificial intelligence. IBM has proposed to buy software maker HashiCore for over $6 billion. The US-based firm HashiCore provides cloud computing products to software developers. The deal is expected to help IBM expand its presence in the cloud computing space and cater to the growing demand from, uh, artificial from the artificial intelligence sector. The American communications firm Cisco has said that hackers breached its security systems earlier this year. The hackers allegedly targeted Cisco's adaptive security appliance. They exploited the device's vulnerabilities to spy on multiple governments. Cisco has blamed a hacker group called UAT4356 for the breach. U.S. prosecutors are seeking a three-year prison sentence for Changpeng Zhao, the founder of the cryptocurrency exchange Binance. Zhao and his firm are accused of violating money laundering laws in the U.S. He pleaded guilty in the case. Last year, Binance was accused of not reporting more than 100,000 suspicious transactions on its platform. The company agreed to pay a $4.32 billion penalty. American plane maker Boeing's revenue declined by 8% in the first quarter of this year. This is the first time the firm's revenue has dropped in the last seven quarters. Boeing has blamed lower jet deliveries for its earnings decline. The plane maker has been under severe scrutiny over safety concerns around its jets. The U.S. aviation regulator has imposed restrictions on Boeing's production capacity. American electric appliance maker Whirlpool will lay off about 1,000 employees globally. The job cuts aim to save money for the firm as it deals with a slowdown in sales. Whirlpool sales declined by 3.4% in the first quarter of this year. The firm plans to save up to $400 million through layoffs and cost cuts in 2024. Car maker Hyundai Motors has reported a 2.4% drop in its first quarter profits. This was due to a sharp decline in car sales in the firm's second biggest market, its home country, South Korea. Hyundai sales in South Korea slipped by over 16% in this first quarter. Meanwhile, American car maker Ford Motors has reported a strong first quarter earnings for 2024. The company's revenue rose by 3% in Q1 compared to the same period last year. Strong sales of Ford's commercial and hybrid vehicles helped boost its earnings. India's central bank has imposed restrictions on the private lender Kotak Mahindra Bank. Kotak has been barred from onboarding new customers through its online platforms. It has also been asked to stop issuing new credit cards. India's central bank cited data security concerns for its actions on Kotak Mahindra Bank. Kotak Mahindra Bank has been accused of not complying with data security standards for two consecutive years. Now on to sports news. We start with cricket updates from the Indian Premier League. Delhi Capitals beat Gujarat Titans by four runs. Delhi posted a staggering 224 runs in their innings. Rishabh Pant led Delhi from the front and smashed an unbeaten 88. Gujarat put up a valiant fight in reply. Batter Sai Sudarshan scored 65 and David Miller contributed to the run chase with 55. However, they fell just short with 220 for eight. Legendary sprinter Usain Bolt has been named ambassador for the men's T20 World Cup. The Jamaican runner said cricket has always held a special place in his heart. Bolt will play a pivotal role during the event's promotions and fan engagements. The ICC Men's T20 World Cup will take place from the 1st of June to the 29th. 
In football, Liverpool suffered a shocking 2-0 defeat against Everton in the English Premier League. Everton opened the scoring through Jared uh, Branthwaite in the first half. Dominic Calvert-Lewin doubled their lead with a goal in the 58th minute. The loss has put a massive dent in Liverpool's Premier League title hopes. They are now three points behind leaders Arsenal with only four games left to play. Meanwhile, Manchester United secured a hard-fought 4-2 victory against bottom side Sheffield United. Man United had to come back from behind twice to win the game at Old Trafford. Jaden Bogle gave Sheffield the lead in the 35th minute, but Harry Maguire levelled the score before half-time. The, visitor, uh, the visitors restored their lead just after the interval. Ben uh, Brereton Diaz found the back of the net in the 50th minute, giving Sheffield a brief 2-1 lead. But Manchester United were rescued by captain Bruno Fernandes, who scored two back-to-back -back goals. Rasmus Hotland uh, got United's fourth late on to seal the win. Barcelona coach Xavi Hernandez has reversed his decision to step down at the end of this season. A club spokesperson has confirmed that Xavi will continue with the La Liga Giants for the 2024-25 campaign. Xavi had earlier said that he would leave Barca after a 5-3 loss to uh, Villarreal in January. But he has now made a U-turn after talks with the club president and the board. In tennis, former men's world number one Rafael Nadal is uncertain about playing at the French Open. Nadal told reporters that he is far from being in peak form. He added that he will only play at the French Open if he feels competitive. Nadal returned to tennis this year after a prolonged injury break but is st still struggling with his fitness. Japan's Naomi Osaka had a successful start in her Madrid Open campaign. She defeated Belgium's Greet Minen 6-4-6-1 in straight sets. This was Osaka's first, clay, uh, first win on a clay court in two years. She fired eight aces and faced just one breakpoint during the match. Meanwhile, French veteran Gael Monfils has crashed out of the Madrid Open. He suffered a first-round loss at the hands of Italy's Luciano Darderi. Darderi beat Monfils 6-4, 6-2 to set up a second-round clash against American Taylor Fritz. Star Indian long jumper Murli Sri Shankar had a successful knee surgery in Qatar's capital Doha. He had injured himself while training in the Indian city of Palakkad earlier this month. Sri Shankar was supposed to compete at the Paris Olympics, but the knee injury has ruled him out. The long jumper has withdrawn from the Paris Games. Parisians pumped up their Olympic spirit with a series of workouts inside the iconic Louvre Museum. The program is dubbed Run in the Louvre and it combines art and athleticism. Participants took, uh, uh, took part in various 10-minute workouts like yoga and dancing. The 2024 20, uh, Paris Olympics are set to take place from July 26th to August 11th. Now for entertainment news. According to the music streaming platform Spotify, Taylor Swift's new album, The Tortured Poets Department, has surpassed 1 billion streams in less than a week. This is the only album in the streaming platform's history that has achieved this feat. The album has 16 songs and was released on April 19th. Meanwhile, Kim Kardashian feels that Taylor Swift should move on from their long-standing feud. According to reports, Kim Kardashian has forgotten about it. This comes after the American media personality lost thousands of followers on Instagram after Swift released a diss track against Kardashian and her former husband, uh, the rapper known as Ye. The Coachella Music Festival will have to pay a hefty fine for Lana Del Rey's performance. The festival is particular about every performer's show timings. According to reports, uh, Lana Del Rey extended her performance by 13 minutes, which amounts to $28,000. 
the creators of the festival charged a, fine, a fixed fine of $20,000 for extending a show's timing. The Good Half, starring Nick Jonas, has set its preview screening dates. The screening for the comedy drama movie is scheduled for the uh, 23rd of July and 25th in North America. It will run in at least 900 theatres, followed by a virtual Q&A session with Nick Jonas. It's unclear if the film will get a traditional theatrical release later. Jennifer Aniston will take on the role of a produ producer in the film Nine to Five. It's the reimagining of the 1980 film that's about three female office colleagues who embark on a mission to seek revenge from their sexist boss. The new fil film is still in the making stage. The premiere of the film Pool Man took place in Los Angeles. It stars actor Chris Pine, who's also debuting as a director with this film. The story is about a pool cleaner who uncovers a water heist. Pool Man will release on the 10th of May. Netflix has hinted at the release of Emily in Paris season 4 this year. According to Netflix's co-chairman, the season could premiere in the second half of 2024. The show is about an American woman who moves to Paris for her career. Season 3 of Emily in Paris left the viewers on a cliffhanger. Paramount Plus has renewed its series Dora for a second season. The show is based on the hit Nickelodeon uh, cartoon Dora the Explorer. The story follows the iconic Latina he uh, heroine Dora who goes into a fantastical rainforest with her friends. Uh, star belongings were placed for auction at a fundraiser for the children living through wars. Over 70 celebrities donated rare items for the auction. The list includes items like a Barbie poster signed by Margot Robbie and guitars signed by Ed Sheeran and costumes from the show The Crown. Sixty-year-old Alejandra Marisa Rodriguez was crowned Miss Universe uh, for Buenos Aires. She says her victory will encourage others to do projects that they did not dare to complete because they felt old. Rodriguez will now compete for the crown of Miss Universe Argentina uh, 2024 in May. From impeachments to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage. From the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill, we know the issues, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America.